Live from historic Fort Andros in downtown Brunswick, your way to wake up on the Midcoast. The Midcoast Morning Buzz, Richard Casimer, Jim Blyken, Radio 9, WCME. Our guest this morning is Peter Alexander. He's a Maine singer-songwriter. He is also the executive director of the Maine Alliance for Arts and Education, as if that isn't enough to do. Peter will be premiering his new CD, Promised Land, tonight at Slate's Restaurant in Hollowell. Doors open at 6.30, dinner served until 8, and then all the fun starts. Uh, once the dishes are done, the music kicks off at 8.15. 15 bucks for tickets. That includes a free copy of Promised Land. When was the last time you heard a musician giving the stuff away? Never. You're just incredible. Peter, welcome to the show. How are you, brother? Thank you, Richard. Tell me about Promised Land, the new CD. How long has this been in the works? Uh, I started recording it in October of uh, 2011, and we we finished it uh, around June of uh, 2012. I actually got everything in the can, but we didn't uh, get the thing actually published until October. And there's actually uh, some logic in that, because uh, the uh, Recording Academy, which does the Grammys, uh, starts their cycle uh, on October 1st. And uh, we had several members of the uh, Recording Academy that want to submit this CD for a Grammy. Oh, really? It's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So I recorded it uh, with Judd Caswell uh, at, at the controls right here in Brunswick uh, at the Frog Hollow Studio. And Judd did a really fantastic job. And uh, I played all the instruments except the drums, uh, which created a giant challenge when we wanted to do a CD release party because I had to find musicians to, uh, to perform the material. Well, how difficult is that? Because you know it inside and out. And then you've got to bring people in. And so what do you do? You play the CD for them. They have to listen to it and then get the chops down, as it were. You can tell how hip I am. I, I said chops. <laughs> That's pretty cool. You know, <laughs> I, I, I can't be too much of a dictator about it. I have pretty strong ideas about what I want. But also I want the creativity of each musician. And uh, I've got Thomas Succi on drums, and he's a fantastic drummer. Uh, he's doing stuff very differently from what, the way it is on the CD. Uh, I have uh, a Sheldon Burke. Uh, great bass player. Uh, he's also a professional qual uh, caliber singer. And there's no way I could ask him to do the bass parts I played. He's a much better bass player than I am. And he's coming up with great stuff. And it, it, the music sounds way better to me uh, performed live. And, and tonight's party is a CD release party at Slate's. Uh, it's going to be the live band. It's not just, we're not going to throw the CD on. It's going to be a live band, and it's going to be good. When you do something like this on your own, when you do solo and you're playing all the instruments, mm -hmm. why do you do that? Is it because of cost, or is it because you know the material and this is the way you want to present it? And then when you go out and do it live, it takes a whole new ambiance to it, a whole new feeling. Is, is it about economics when you do it solo? Well, you know, it kind of backed into it. Uh, I originally thought I was going to do a solo album, that it was just going to be me and an acoustic guitar, maybe throw on a bass and a couple of harmony parts but it got bigger and bigger and I uh, started adding stuff, added drums, added a lot of lead guitar work and I, uh, it just turned into a full orchestrated CD. It didn't uh, start off that way. So your instrument of choice is a Martin 12-string? That's pretty much right. Yeah. So how is it that, and, and that's what's portrayed on the cover, so how is it that you go from playing a Martin 12-string to pretty much to the wall rock album, which, <laughs> which, which is what it is? I mean, I was listening to it, you know, I know your material, I know, yeah. I know your stuff, and then when I heard this last night, I'm going, well, wait a minute, this has got kind of shades of uh, John Lincoln Wright in the early days of Maine music. Mm. This has got some edge to it. Well, thank you. I, that's a high compliment, and I appreciate it. I often tell people that uh, they ask me what kind of music do you play and i say I basically play rock and roll without the bass and drums when i'm playing solo so i mean that's pretty much where i'm at so playing 12 string guitar it's a, it's a big instrument there's lots of sound there and uh, it forms a, a really solid foundation uh, for the kind of music i like to play i want to play the title cut uh, a little bit of promised land this is peter alexander from his new cd uh, which is called promised land and he's doing a cd release party at slates tonight in hollowell and we'll get into more about all the other things that you do with your day job as it were so this Great. is promised land peter alexander <laughs> Pretty women dancing in the street. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. Put on your shoes now, don't be late. We got something to celebrate. Park's gonna start at a half past ten. We'll wake up in the morning and we'll do it again. Hey, hey, hey.
That's Peter Alexander from his album Promised Land. That is the title guy that's called Promised Land on Radio 9 WC Me. So where did that come from? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, uh, you know, when I'm writing a song, it's just a riff on the guitar. I, it's just something that just strikes me. Uh, the best songs, uh, I think you're going to play Dreaming here in a few minutes, and a, a, a lot of the best songs have come out of that dream state just before waking, and uh, a lot of creativity happens there, and I found that if I don't immediately sit down and work it out, if I have an idea, what I, if I wake up with an idea in my head, I, I'll lose it. So One of my first interviews, I ever did when I was in, first started out in radio was Dave Mallet, and I asked him, "Do you have to live your music? Do you have to live the lyrics in order for you to write a successful song?" And he looked at me like I had three heads and said, "No, <laughs> of course not." And so, where do you draw from? I draw mostly from my personal experience, uh, and music for me is just a, a total joyous celebration. I mean, and you can probably tell from that song this is a big celebratory song it's come on everybody let's jump and shout the summertime's coming the get the blues on out i mean it's it's just fun i just enjoy playing so a lot of my songs come come from a, a personal space but you know just like a novelist you come up with uh, with ideas and you take fragments from here and there and you put something together so i wouldn't say that my songs are necessarily autobiographical but some of them draw from that and so. they're from somebody's life so somebody can identify with them i hope so well, let's talk about your day job. You're the executive director of the Maine Alliance for the Arts and Education. That's another great organization here in Maine of inspiring school children to continue the arts or even get into it. How does that work? What do you do with them? Well, our main thing is to, to make sure that every child in Maine has an opportunity uh, for really high-quality arts education. Which is getting tougher every day with the budget cuts. Well, and the arts education programs are the first thing that gets cut because we don't have big advocates out there. You know, if they try to cut the football program in a high school, forget it. All the parents are going to come in and it's gonna, they're going to confront the school board. We're trying to organize that kind of level of care and concern for arts education that will get parents and students motivated um, to impress upon school administrators and the, and the people who hold the, uh, the purse strings that, that cut or install these programs that arts education is as important, equally important, with all the what they call the STEM subjects, which is science, technology, engineering, and math, which is a big national focus on STEM education, trying to get people to be you know, the innovative economy and inventions and all this kind of stuff. But in reality, if you don't have arts education as a part of that formula, it's like the difference between a draftsman and an architect. I mean, you have to have the creative piece of it. If you're going to have an innovative and creative economy, you have to have people who understand the creative process. And arts education works on the right side of the brain, whereas math and science, most of that's the left side of um, brain activity. So we want to make sure that every child has access to high-quality arts education so that our economy can thrive and so that our quality of life will be better. But we also recognize that arts education in schools does not thrive in communities that don't value their own arts and culture. So we're taking a two-pronged approach to try to stimulate and um, leverage existing community resources in every community in Maine. But we're starting uh, with uh, a number where we have both an art walk and a Main Street program because it takes that kind of leadership and passion uh, to make things happen. Your wife is involved in the bath art work that's coming up? My wife is a photographic artist. She also is an excellent musician, really, really good, and she sings uh, with, with my band, so she'll be performing with us tonight. And it's great. We get these wonderful four-part harmonies, and it's just when they come sailing in, it's <laughs> really fun. But she uh, does photo photographic art, uh, still life uh, portraiture and images of the mechanical world, three sort of distinct bodies of work. And uh, her first premier exhibition of her works is going to be uh, this Friday as part of the uh, Bath Art Walk on May 17th, and then we're going to have a special sort of grand opening on the 18th. And this is in our home. Uh, we just renovated uh, what used to be an old barn, and it's a wonderful uh, gallery and studio space. We use it for both for music and for her art. And for other stuff, I think we'll probably hold house concerts in there and other kind of fun things. But. You bunch of hippies, I tell you. I'm, <laughs> I'm so proud of you. You're also involved with the Maine Songwriters Association. I've been president of the Maine Songwriters Association since uh, 2009. I'm, I'm looking for somebody else to take over the leadership. It's just too many things for me to do. But uh, I really believe in the organization. We try to provide opportunities, uh, instruction, workshops. Um, we do a songwriting contest. Uh, every year, uh, Nancy Sfera, who works right here in this building, uh, and Giff Jameson are two of our leading board members who uh, take the leading role in organizing that. 
Scott Woodruff's a fantastic guy. He runs the uh, open mic at the Lions Pride restaurant uh, every Tuesday night. It's one of the, probably the best open mic in the state because uh, the way he treats people with great respect and people go there to hear the music. So it, as a musician, you feel really honored uh, and respected when you get on that stage. So I noticed that since coming back here, now I grew up in Lisbon Falls, and I'm very familiar with the Bath, Brunswick area, and the music scene dating back to the early 70s and, and 80s, a very thriving community. I'm noticing now, too, a lot more main singers, songwriters, and collaborations of the such here at Frontier Cafe, Chocolate Church, you're getting more main singer-songwriters, people from New England. Is there a resurgence, or what's the music scene like here in Maine now in, in 2013? I can't tell you from a historical perspective, because I only moved back to Maine in 2008, and I moved to Portland, and then just moved up to Bath two years ago. Uh, so I can't provide you a sort of a historical, uh, you know, what's the delta <laughs> to a change. But I can say it's pretty thriving. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of open mics, uh, which great opportunities for uh, musicians to play. And some of those open mics are, are really attracting super high quality musicians. So it's not, uh, you know, not just uh, some guy picked up a guitar last week and is just going to try it out. Although those po those folks are welcome too. But we're getting really high quality musicians up here, and it's really great to see that uh, the scene thriving. How are the venues? The venues are good. Um, the ones that that really want music, there's not that many where, as a musician, you go only for the purpose of having people listen to you. You know, a, a lot of the working musicians are playing in bars and pubs, and there's a lot of background noise. You know, you take the gigs that you can get. Uh, and it's from a historical perspective, which I can provide, uh, because I've been playing music for a very long time, I'm making less money now as a musician uh, when I play out on an evening that I made when I was 18 years old, playing in a rock band when I was a teenager. Uh, but that's just the way the music scene is. It's very, very hard to make money as a musician. So if you're into it for the money, I mean, there's a few people who are doing it, and, you know, more power to them. It's really, really cool to see them do it. Peter Alexander, Maine singer-songwriter. The guy does it all. He is a musician. He is the executive director of the Maine Alliance for Arts and Education. He is the director of the Maine Songwriters Association. He has a lovely wife who does everything. Peter will be premiering his CD, Promised Land, tonight at Slate's Restaurant in Hollowell. Doors open up at 6.30. Din Din served at 8 o'clock. Music starts at 8.15. That's at Slate's 167 Water Street in Hollowell. Tickets are $15, and they get a free copy. And if you don't get up there, you can also find it on my website. Site, which is peteralexander.us. Reserve your tickets at Slates at 207-622-9575. Peter, thank you so much for coming in. It's always great to see you. I've been trying to snag you for months, but you have been a conduit for us. You've been getting guests in here and a lot of leads, so we thank you for that. But the, again, the door's always open. Next time, bring your guitar. Thank you. You guys run a great show here. Thank well, you very much. Well, thank you very much. We're going to play out. This is a, another cut from Peter's CD, Promised Land. This is called Dreaming. Peter Alexander on Radio 9 WCME. Between a woman and her man Why 
has so much love Always comes with heartache too Where were you last night While I was dreaming Where were you when I awoke alone I was thinking of the tears I shed Knowing how the dancers all got paired And why you had to sleep in your own home Wish I could live this dream forever I have you live it there with me Last night when I was seated. 